I think, I think you are. Okay, well, uh, yeah. okay, good. Thank you much for uh, your dedication to the course and staying uh, so long in the semester with this activity. So the um, one of the goals of the course was um, scientific uh, communications and uh, we are approaching to this aspect more and more. So um, we do have um, totally uh, four meetings uh, remaining. So um, today we'll go over the plans and requirements on uh, composing your written reports. Uh, on Thursday, um, coming Thursday, uh, I'm encouraging everyone uh, to submit by email the drafts of your written reports and uh, we will be practicing uh, peer review of them, which is an important part of academic life. I will uh, introduce this activity. And um, in a week and a half from now, uh, there will be uh, presentations. Um, meanwhile, um, I will be in the lab uh, tomorrow night to uh, help with, um, if, if there are more questions towards uh, research procedures. Um, it's always, even for those who are very knowledgeable and, and skilled, um, Mm, the individual research always have some underwater stones and uh, making them brainstorm can always be helpful. Um, if needed, I will uh, reserve the connection on the day before the presentations, just if, uh, if, if anyone will, will need it. So I think everyone agreed to uh, meet for presentations on uh, Thursday, 11 a.m. I have submitted uh, the request to do so. And um, let me introduce the idea of this um, scientific communication that it is part of the, of the course. Um, the goals of um, research have several aspects and uh, most um, ideal and noble goal is just to satisfy curiosity or serve uh, society but um, even if um, you are looking at a research activity driven by this uh... oh hi Roger thanks for connecting um, even if um, your um, research activities are, are planned just by curiosity and help to your community, in order to survive as a researcher, you need to prove some accomplishments just to stay alive and get uh, salaries and, and, and grants. And the way of assessing success of uh, researchers is to uh, make sure that the peers, the researchers on the same foot, uh, on the same uh, um, background, appreciate what selected researcher is, is, is doing. I know that in engineering criteria are, can be sometimes a little different, but uh, for uh, basic science, it, the peer review is, is the main thing. And uh, one of the um, mechanisms to make sure that uh, researchers are doing good and right things is um, competition to get uh, papers accepted into journals so in the remaining two meetings this week today and, and on thursday we will cover this aspect so um, some of you have already uh, played a role of co-author of scientific publications if uh, not you will be doing it very soon uh, if you are in the graduate pro program and there is a high chance that you will do even if you are in the undergraduate and work in research. Um, there is an aspect that, uh, I don't know, maybe you all know it from uh, by heart, but for me it was a big shock when I uh, entered this activity. 
that um, reviewers and it is a model of uh, of this accepting the accomplishments so you compose the things that you were curious about in a manuscript you submit them to the editor and then you are getting back uh, uh, some aggressive and negative criticism which you, you are not expecting and this is a, a traditional thing so in order to get a paper accepted and published there is a barrier that one needs to overcome so we will try to mimic this activity in class in order to help uh, you in your big life in your real life so when, when it will uh, come to actual research activity and submitting papers replies of the reviewers will be not so big shock for you so um a little disclaimer i know that we are very compressed and squeezed with a tough schedule and, and time so um, do not worry if your written reports will not be 100 percent ready please send whatever you will have by thursday morning as an email anyway you will need it as a uh, in class material and you will have the second chance to submit the final draft on um, coming monday but preliminary draft is 100 percent needed in the class so in order to mimic uh, real life we will uh, uh, play a game we will play that in class we will have a couple of journals with editors and reviewers and you will submit you will select which uh, elect which uh, journal you want to submit your manuscript into i have some suggestions but they are very informal you may redecide so you may have a, a journal of quantum confinement and nanomaterials and um, um, Rebecca may decide to submit there and answering to your email um, uh, there is a there was an attempt to add um, um, sh2 and uh, uh, there is a directory where one can take preliminary geometry and then uh, start going from there um, the uh, Salim may want to uh, submit his uh, work there because uh, his research is related to um, nanomaterials, doped nanomaterials for photoluminescence. Uh, and also, um, Yang Chao Liao may, may um, decide to submit to this journal of uh, nanomaterials. But uh, let me bring up um, a little aspect uh, informally that in the top row, the blue carbons here are surrounded by white uh, by white hydrogens so there are hydrogens every, everywhere and in in the uh, panel below they are replaced by red oxygens uh, which is uh, probably a typo in um, uh, preparing the um, pot car file so um, this looks like an oxygen and therefore the orbitals are attracted so much to this oxidizing atoms and also here it looks also like hydrogen in place of nitrogen so um, if you have time to for fixing it it would be really great and this hydrogen yeah. eventually should be here okay um, um, other journal could be journal of uh, reactions chemical reactions and uh, definitely the uh, project by uh, steven vestra fits to this journal at most so um, there are of course it is individual projects and um, author of the, of the project makes uh, decisions what to do or what not to do here are just uh, some uh, options and uh, suggestions so uh, to my understanding uh, Stephen is modifying this metal organic complex where this is ruthenium by 
placing at this spot reactants and intermediates that are being catalyzed by ruthenium atom. So uh, in, in this image it is water molecule H2O and um, which is um, symbolized here. Um, by removing protons, by removing protons, like removing this uh, hydrogen, one is getting OH group. And by removing a second proton, one is getting the only oxygen that will be coordinated to the ruthenium atom. So, in, uh, to my understanding, the goal of this research is to um, explore an opportunity to oxidize water, to drive the reaction of converting uh, water, H2O, into oxygen. This uh, reaction is known uh, to be very, very uh, challenging, and here one goes only halfway, only up to having uh, one oxygen atom adsorbed to the um, ruthenium, to the to the to the catalytic spot on the ruthenium catalyst. Um, the three versions of the reactant and intermediates can be explored by uh, modifying number of electrons and uh, depending on um, amount of uh, protons uh, the same number of electrons can uh, uh, serve different um, oxidation state. For example, with, uh, in hydrogen, when there are two uh, hydrogens, um, this number of electrons will correspond to a neutron, uh, and uh, this number of electrons will correspond to um, cation 2 plus. But if you remove uh, two protons, then uh, uh, this if you remove two protons, the same number of electrons will correspond to a neutron. So for each of the uh, geometry, uh, three geometries and uh, different number of electrons, one can find total energy and explore different pathways. Um, so one can start with uh, um, one configuration and go into y-axis, which would mean uh, remove protons or go to X axis uh, which will mean removing of electrons and uh, the direction that that uh, has the um, small or maybe simultaneously remove uh, proton and electron and the reaction with smallest uh, barrier uh, seems most favorable um, Another work that uh, could be um, contributed to the Journal of Reactions is by uh, uh, Mahek uh, by transforming a monomer from phospholipid bilayer by uh, aggressive uh, chemicals. Another potential uh, journal uh, could be Journal of Polymers um, and maybe journal and uh, church transfer. Um, so the work by Amir may fit there very well. Um, he's working on, on conjugated uh, polymers and uh, with um, outstanding electronic properties and optical properties. The work of uh, Jalfan may work there as well. And uh, I have a big curiosity to learn the name of this uh, compound uh, when it will be time for, for submission. 
and there is a special work uh, that uh, doesn't fit into nanomaterials it doesn't fit into reactions and it doesn't fit into polymers so maybe we need to arrange a special journal for it so Raju is uh, looking for conductivity of uh, ionic uh, electrolytes and um, maybe we should arrange a special journal for it or uh, fit it as a special chapter of, of this of this journal okay um, I was getting some emails, um, but I, I'm um, with um, requests and questions uh, to look into files, but I feel energy to, to get and answer more emails, so please do not hesitate if any assistance is needed. So, the research uh, procedure that we did discuss last time uh, in an oversimplified way uh, means um, preparing optimized geometry and geometry at the end of uh, thermalized molecular dynamics and then compare uh, electronic structure density of state spectra uh, before and after after dynamics and uh, derive some conclusions um, I everyone who submitted uh, some intermediate uh, data uh, by today will uh, will give will get the extra uh, credit for this uh, uh, figures um, but this is a small portion uh, those who didn't do it do not lose chances the most important is to submit the first draft of the the data is from previous years. Let's remove it. Um, submit the full draft in um, 46 hours. So, um, not by uh, literally by the time of, of the class, maybe a couple of hours before would be, would be really great. So, um, what are written reports and how to organize them um, this is um, quite standard and, and natural project um, sorry natural process but uh, just in case if some of you are doing it for the first time which uh, I doubt because um, in um, mm, while going through the path of education, we all are writing some reports and theories. But just in case, here is a little recital. Um, we, at this class, are not the first uh, humans on the globe to write written reports or interacting with colleagues. So this uh, procedure of um, writing written reports on a professional subject or presenting um, oral uh, talk was um, developed for centuries and even sev several millennia in several civilizations. So, um, since generally we do not know who will be reader and reviewer of uh, of your work, it's um, very standard and typical to start the um, written report is a little motivation and explanation of uh, real or potential benefits to a very general uh, audience and um, here are some uh, oversimplified and may maybe even silly uh, thoughts how to explain to a general audience uh, why your project is needed and uh, I know that at least uh, one person in the audience, uh, uh, Stephen, was al already seen uh, this uh, slide. So, in uh, in our research um, activity, um, we are working on generating new knowledge, which is uh, um, stored in form of publications and patents, and it is uh, uh, directly 
it is a direct input into industry for optimizing um, the industrial procedures or designing new tools, new devices uh, that uh, give uh, free energy or new uh, instruments, um, gadgets for citizens. And uh, then uh, citizens become pleasing, pleased with new uh, cell phones and contribute taxes that uh, federal government contributes to uh, basic research. So it's one loop. Another loop is that um, uh, by creating publications, they are creating a um, database of knowledge that feed, feeds back into science and helps helps it to uh, work in a um, productive and healthy way. Another way how the accomplishment of your research projects uh, may benefit a uh, general citizen that uh, by doing specific uh, research you are um, growing as a potential direct contributors uh, to industry. That also helps uh, to make some goods for end user that will support uh, research activity. At the same time, uh, by uh, participating in the research, uh, you are improving your qualification and generating data sets that can be used uh, if in the future you will be teaching next generation of students uh, that through education uh, increases scientific literacy of, of citizens who become pleased and support uh, uh, federal government with taxes and, and uh, government supports research activity. So one doesn't need to write these things explicitly in the introduction to the paper, but um, just keep in mind that generally there is no guarantee that the reader and reviewer of your written report is um, a researcher in the same area, um, um, with the same expertise as, as you are. And some uh, general statements, um, some reference to something that um, everyone can accept is uh, valuable and appreciated. For example, Mahek can say that uh, by damaging phospholipid by layer the, the cell membrane of a virus, one can uh, perform disinfection and save globe from coronavirus. Uh, this is a good introductory statement. So, uh, the important challenge that comes in front of um, anyone who starts writing is to how to organize the data. So suppose that uh, all data in the project are collected, that you do have figures, captions to them, and you just need to um, write down a verbal report. And um, I don't know, no one is asking this question, but uh, um, there is a very natural question, how long should be the report? Um, I would think two pages would be a minimum, but um, I know from my own experience and, and from human nature, um, as soon as you come into the mode of um, inspired and enthusiastic writing, it is very hard to stop. Uh, so uh, um, it, there was a suggestion to write four pages in previous years in this course, but a lot of um, participants of the class were writing like 10 pages just because they had some uh, ideas and results to, to share. Um, so it's just a general idea that, uh, about the lens. So if you can fit in four pages, it's great, but I, I doubt that it is possible. In research activity, in uh, modern civilization, there are uh, standard ways to organize uh, results, organize data, and explain them. Uh, so that uh, reader 
will be impressed and give credit to the author. So um, typically the scientific writing includes uh, four sections, introduction with some uh, common uh, rational uh, why uh, this uh, research is needed, methodology uh, which uh, helps reader to produce results, um, results in discussion with actual uh, like facts, actual knowledge that uh, you have accumulated, like figures, tables, and their explanation, and then uh, conclusions. So here's uh, approximate length, and what one can put in the introduction. So my system is interesting, we put some reference. Identify open uh, problem, like formulate a question. Um, a lot of us start, so uh, you are selecting specific research area just because uh, you have some uh, curiosity. But uh, one may want to um, reformulate the reason to study this um, specific subject from the point of view of um, common citizen of um, general public. So, um, open a question. Why this specific area of research needs additional research? Isn't it uh, everything clear? Um, and as soon as you formulate a question, there is a little trick that originates from uh, detective stories. As soon as you formulate the question, you may place educated guess or hypothetic answer to your question. Um, this is a little uh, trick because first uh, researchers generate results and already know some answers. So by the time when you are writing introduction, you already know what was your question and what is the answer. But to help to entertain reader, to help uh, to uh, keep an eye of the reader onto the uh, onto the materials, it is better to uh, pretend that uh, here is an open question that you are going to answer, and there is a potentially correct answer which we do not know at this point. So hypothetical answer. If you really can identify something uh, area of the of the knowledge that doesn't have clear answer and you formulate a hypothesis. It is really great. But even if you already know the answer, just this uh, two-step uh, schematic. First, formulate a question. Second, formulate a hypothetical answer is a very healthy style of logical organization of, of your presentation. So methods are just a list of uh, procedures and in this course um, the m best way to represent methods is to write a couple of equations telling which equations are being solved by a specific software. So results in discussions, uh, basically if you do have tables and figures you show them and then write like a half a paragraph or like a sentence about each figure. Figure 1 shows the model, figure 2 shows density of states. And if you have inspiration, you may explain your interpretation of the results. So, the conclusions. The, in the conclusions, one can tell whether the results were proving your hypothetical answer from the introduction right or wrong. You can tell that results did support hypothetic answer formulated at the beginning. So uh, if you can organize your thinking and your writing in this way, it would read really well. And it is normal to um, make an attempt to convince readers that uh, results are trustable and valuable if, if you can. Uh, if you can give some arguments why uh, the results are, are solid. Any questions to this little um, plan?
Okay, I do it uh, here. It means everyone accepts it or uh, no one cares. So, um, the important part of uh, scientific communications that there is a tradition, at least in the modern uh, civilization and in the scientific community, to place accomplishment of a certain author under question. So uh, it is a task of, uh, of the editor and uh, reviewers to put the ac accomplishments reported by the author under doubt. If, uh, if you are doing it in, in, in writing. Uh, if it is a um, scientific conference, uh, you have seen picture, uh, or if you haven't, you will see it. So that um, when there is a section of questions after the presentation, sometimes there are aggressive questions, uh, well, not, not aggressive personally, but in the, in the attitude, trying to uh, request uh, a proof that reported results uh, make sense and, and are correct, um, suggesting that they may not be correct. So this is normal activity in the scientific community, and the goal of this activity is to prevent the core of uh, uh, human society knowledge from uh, some um, from errors. So. Um, the discussion is often, or maybe always, a part of the scientific communications. So, uh, in order to um, see where this arrangement of the sections came from, I would like to bring your attention to a couple of uh, ancient uh, philosophers in uh, Greek and Roman civilizations, although there were similar uh, thinkers in uh, all parts of the world because um, an idea of uh, delivering ideas and convincing peers to, to make some action is a, a standard uh, activity of humans in any part of the world. So, um, in uh, Greek tradition, there was a uh, thinker, Aristotle, who was uh, trying to summarize which intellectual activity is needed in order to um, transmit arguments towards audience. Um, and the most of his uh, categories of intellectual activity seem intuitive um, that we are not going to, to cover. So this uh, is interesting only from a philosophical point of view. But there is a one aspect that is um, uh, very important from practical point of view, the arrangement of uh, fact, materials, and uh, arguments for uh, best effect. So the um, ideas of Greek uh, philosopher Aristotle were picked up um, by ancient Roman thinker and practicing uh, speaker. Uh, Cicero. So um, he was um, declaring that um, any public speech has um, 
three goals in uh, Latin it is Delectare the Cherry Movere and in English Delight Teach and Move. So how does it relate to us here in this class or how does it relate to uh, us in uh, our big life in research activity after we get uh, degrees and uh, get into more independent uh, research and development activity. The need to overcome the barrier for acceptance of the paper means one needs to motivate one needs to motivate the um, editor interviewers to make specific actions, specifically to accept your paper for publication. In class in two days uh, on Thursday, um, we will try to convince each other, so all the participants of the class will serve two roles, one role as an author, second role as a reviewer, to convince reviewer to uh, write a very enthusiastic positive review. So uh, this is main goal of any um, public presentation. And in addition, any public speech uh, uh, has um, a goal to please and uh, entertain audience and uh, to provide some new knowledge because uh, humans by, by nature are curious. And in order to um, make decision that a speaker uh, or writer needs, one first may want to please and, and communicate new knowledge. So here is the list of standard sections of the writing or public speech according to uh, this uh, ancient um, philosopher and, and, and speaker. And you will see that the plan of uh, reading report does originate from, from this um, sections and is uh, tightly, tightly, tightly connected. Unlike today's scientific papers, which uh, we have seen typically have uh, four sections, the ancient presentations did include six sections. So, but uh, if we look through them, uh, we will see some connections to the modern world. And uh, there is, these ideas are not uh, are originating from uh, my education because I, I didn't have uh, humanitarian things. It's just a quick summary from Wikipedia that you can uh, check uh, yourself. So, six sections in the ancient presentations. So the uh, introduction, and I will not try to speak uh, Latin, but here is how it writes, exordium. Um, one uh, needs to make a very quick start to urge reader forward uh, to um, keep an eye on the paper. In uh, modern scientific literature, it, it is an abstract and uh, maybe an attractive uh, title. So um, there is a high chance that uh, the reviewer get, uh, may get tired before he starts reading the body of the paper. And uh, to prevent the reader from getting bored, one needs some uh, provocative uh, abstract. So the second part statement of case Narratio, it sounds like uh, English narrative, but in um, our today's life it is more like uh, literature review. So, um, a list of um, accomplishments made by other researchers with uh, credit to them and uh, some uh, references. So, what is known in the specific case, why this case is interesting in, in more, with more details. Um, 
before we go forward, I want to mention maybe ahead of time that in the modern scientific literature only an analog of the section number four, the proof of the case, the actual materials uh, uh, is um, given the best focus and highlight and uh, takes like 60% of the, of the papers. While in uh, the ancient approach, the actual proofs were taken like 10% while uh, other accompanying things were given much more um, attention. So the third part in this uh, classic arrangement of uh, the materials for the paper is um, the outline, which um, in writing it's like divisio. Um, so in modern style of scientific literature, some people write a paragraph at the end of the introduction section telling the paper is organized as follows, uh, especially if it is a long paper. So um, it helps uh, it reader to focus and uh, gives heads up of what to expect so that uh, the um, effort of reader to understand the content will be assisted by uh, providing, so to say, table of content. So number four, proof of the case, confirmatio, is um, actually our figures and tables. So it is a fact, uh, materials, and in some sense methods. So like, uh, how do we get this um, results and what, what they are? Um, the section number five in this um, ancient approach was originating from the knowledge that um, audience, in our case it is editor and reviewers, could be potentially skeptical and even aggressive to the statements offered by the uh, author. So uh, refutation of possible arguments or confutatio in, in, uh, in Latin, uh, meaning that uh, the author anticipates that uh, someone of readers can uh, disagree, then the author thinks forward which arguments audience can place against the this work and prepare an argument to refute this possible criticism so one needs to uh, while writing one needs to think ahead about possible criticism. And um, the uh, section number th six, conclusion per ratio is uh, um, summation uh, of um, arguments that were provided. And uh, the thing that I uh, uh, like uh, at most in this Wikipedia uh, article, it is a thing that we, we do not do in uh, today's academic world, but in ancient time is uh, um, tell that anyone who disagrees with uh, um, this work is a bad person. In, uh, and and um, induce positive feelings to the author, client and, and, and the case. So um, today, n not all of these sections are literally applicable for today's scientific writing, but 
uh, I hope that uh, uh, it did serve as a little entertainment for you and as a little inspiration to um, think ahead about possible criticism and arrange um, your written reports with understanding that there could be discussion, there could be uh, possible disagreement with uh, statements uh, that, that uh, you are writing. So, um, introduction, methods, results and possible discussion and conclusions. Um, so, the mandatory, obligatory part of uh, today's meeting is done, but I would like to share the criteria of review that we will be doing in, in, uh, in two days. So, uh, each of the uh, classmates will uh, serve as an author and reviewer, and um, there will be a procedure. So, after coming to class and, uh, and having your uh, written report drafts, first drafts of written report submitted, you will get an email. If it, if it would be in class meeting, you would get just printed copy and red pen to write on. Since it will be all electronic, you will get an email with um, Google Docs document of um, someone from, from the class and um, invitation to review this work. And there will be a little form accompanying each written report with uh, suggested criteria for review. So, same as in the uh, true life, um, one can place suggestion and typically in real life it's very rare uh, to get recommendation to for immediate pub publishing or re rejection. Typically, one is getting either minor or major uh, revision. So, while serving as reviewers, we all will be invited to write about like 10 words about uh, the um, how do I understand what was the main message of the author. Why this is needed? It is needed because uh, when I'm writing myself, I cannot imagine how my writing will be interpreted by the reader, or um, if I'm serving as an author, just by human nature, I want to assume that all of my thoughts are immediately understood by the readers, but it is not the case. And if the reader tries to summarize what I was trying to say, and I see this back, it will help me as an author to understand uh, the level of communication or miscommunication. So all reviewers uh, write like 10 words what the paper is about after, after reading. And then we go section by section. So uh, in the introduction, is there a big picture uh, telling who needs it? Um, do authors motivate uh, interest to the subject? Are there any references. Other uh, challenges that um, verb does author verbalize challenges why the subject needs to um, be explored by computational research. Is there a hypothesis formulated in the introduction in a uh, way that uh, the rest of the paper proves this hypothesis right or wrong? So, if, as a reviewer, I can identify this hypothesis, I can quote it here. And um, this is a standard question to reviewers, like which audience the paper target, like uh, narrow specialists in polymers or any anyone interested in science or only experimentalists or any, only theorists. So next section is uh, quality of figures. Uh, this is a little bit childish, but in true life, it's uh, always, often serves as the um, 
a reason to accept or cancel specific paper. Like lines uh, should be thick. If they if they know, one can mention it. Um, lines are coded by dots and dashes because sometimes uh, papers are reproduced without color. Mm. All figures should be consecutively labeled, like one, two, three, four. And if uh, this order is uh, not followed, reviewer may complain about it. Each figure should have a, at least brief captions. If it is not present, reviewer may complain about it. Um, next section, mm, the reviewer may give an idea about uh, presence of logical connection between parts of the paper. Is there any common idea that uh, glues sections together? And practically, reviewer may suggest to switch an order of uh, paragraphs, uh, shorten or remove something, or extend, add explanations of a specific subject. Um, this is a truly helpful part, and uh, by getting this comment, uh, which authors um, may get inspiration for substantial improvement of the written reports. Conclusions. Mm, you may observe that in this form some sections are swapped, so conclusions are analyzed before the results and discussions because some readers, some reviewers indeed read conclusions before getting into, into reading uh, results because the conclusions are shorter. So conclusions should be a standalone uh, uh, brief and uh, attractive text. Um, one can tell if conclusions address challenges and hypotheses uh, provided in the introduction. And um, reviewer may say if uh, the conclusions highlight new knowledge found in this uh, work. The best review, if you want to, if you really like some work and you want to give the best review, uh, you may say, uh, I'm jealous, I regret that I didn't complete this uh, interesting research myself or I want to really uh, learn some methodology and or some uh, interesting system by uh, after reading uh, this paper I want to do the same so it is probably the strongest argument uh, that uh, the reviewer can uh, offer um, often authors cannot prevent themselves of, uh, from uh, mentioning the future direction of research and it's it's a plus it, it is present and uh, if you see that authors provide some information that is uh, beneficial for general public uh, one may also give uh, credit to authors for, for this so we are almost done so um, two more sections and this will be the forms that we all will be filling uh, in, two, in two days so for uh, results and uh, discussion um, just tell if, if it is clear enough to read through um, if authors if author is willing to analyze mechanism of um, effects reported in figures so if uh, an attempt of analysis is provided one should give uh, a credit um, the additional technical comments um, by reading the written report one can the reviewer can get an idea whether amount of support information of figures and tables is uh, right what is needed insufficient for this ambitious task or too much technical boring extensive information so um, 
the author often loses ability to think critically and it is it is normal but reviewers may help author to get back on track and tell like hey why are you showing us 100 uh, figures like only five figures would be sufficient to prove your your main goal so if um, if as a review you see it you can suggest to add or remove figures or add explanation to figures that are not explained and uh, in the methods section uh, basically one uh, may want to uh, reproduce equations that one was solving like uh, DFT equations for uh, kinetic energy plus potential acting on the uh, orbital given energy and orbital um, and equations for density of states and uh, the absorption spectra if any. Uh, please send me an email if you want a template or suggestions uh, for the method sections so it is uh, very normal our main goal was to do practical things but in the written reports a little exposure to equations is needed so uh, either try to collect them from lecture write yourself in Microsoft Word editor or request uh, some templates from me I, I do not mind it is uh, completely fair, fair game and as reviewer, uh, you may complain if uh, some equations are missed or not explained. Um, standard complaints of uh, the reviewers is that like authors didn't explain why they select this specific method, like why they use WASP instead of Gaussian. Um, can one trust that all results with these methods are correct? If, as a reader, I want to reproduce these results, do method section provide enough technical details? And the specific question that um, is coming up at um, the presentations at the very last meeting in the class. Um, by now, we all are using Perdue Burke Axelhoff PB fun functional, no change correlation. Um, we know from our exposure to Gaussian that the results may depend on choice of functional. So, um, as a reviewer, I may say, uh, I may ask author, like, how does one know that results are qualitatively, will stay qualitatively the same if one uh, uses another function for the same uh, protocol like B3 loop or something else so um, if there is no time for doing uh, this calculation at least uh, the author may want to give a comment like I hope or I have some um, reasons to believe that uh, qualitative results will stay the same with different functional. Okay, so this is end of the uh, meeting. I am very open and interested to answer any emails um, and answer any questions uh, right now. If you need to disconnect and depart, feel free to, to do it right now. Meeting is done. Uh, looking forward to see you tomorrow 5 p.m. and in two days 11 a.m. Meeting is done. Thank you for the data. Thank you, Emir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you yeah, see you tomorrow. Yes, thank you, Professor. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes? Uh, 
Uh, please, please repeat. I, I didn't get the question. Oh. Uh huh. If you have figures, uh, you may send them to me uh, for just little uh, credit as for homework and uh, for feedback if, if you want to. But this, uh, um, it, it, it is just an option um, which will help to um, like focus on uh, writing later. later. If uh, it is not done, do not, do not worry. Just uh, try, try your best. Uh, we all understand that uh, there, is, there is no time and uh, it is not a full paper or full thesis. Like if uh, you spend half a page for each section, uh, like um, without figures, it can be like two pages. With figures, like four or maybe longer. So uh, just uh, do whatever is possible. Yes? I think he's speaking. I'll speak later. Okay, okay. Uh, and if you if you need to uh, chat to me more, uh, I'm I'm available by Skype. Uh, can I uh, speak now? Of of course, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 